Excellent! When buying a new TV, the most important specs are its resolution, its size, and its price. For this video, I'm going to assume that the resolution that you want is 4K, and after that, you should get the TV that has the largest screen size possible while staying within your budget, of course, whether that's 500 bucks or $3,000. I recently spent just under $800 on this 65 inch 4K LG TV, which I got at Target after my wife spotted it on Slick Deals with a very nice discount. Uh, who, by the way, I would not like to thank for sponsoring this video because this video is not sponsored by anyone. So LG and Target and Slick Deals can suck it. Not my wife, though. Actually. Point being that I thought you guys might like to hear what my other qualifications for a good future-ready 4K TV were before I made this purchase, since it's probably a popular upgrade item this holiday season. So here are my four rules for buying a 4K TV. Rule number one is seek the ideal inputs. For most people, this means at least three HDMI 2.0a inputs with at least one that is HDCP 2.2 ready. HDMI 2.0a will give you support for 4K 3840 by 2160 resolution as an input. Also, HDR, wide color gamut, and all of that at up to 60 frames per second. HDCP is high bandwidth digital content protection, and although we might not like it, we will need that if we wanna have support for playing back copyright protected content from an HDCP enabled source. I would also like to throw up DisplayPort here as a potential ideal input, but unfortunately, a lot of HD TVs or 4K HD TVs do not have DisplayPort as an input. You would want DisplayPort 1.4 ideally, uh, and that would actually be much more common if you're buying a 4K PC monitor, but let me know in the comments if you actually find a good full-size 4K TV that has a DisplayPort input, because honestly, I would much prefer that to uh, HDMI 2.0a or whatever, if it's available. Rule number two is have HDR. Make sure your new TV has HDR support. This is gonna separate models that came out this year or last year from models that came out prior to that, uh, earlier 4K TVs, because this is a more recent development. Uh, often this will be listed alongside wide color gamut. With high dynamic range source material and an input to an HDR ready TV, the TV can display a much broader range of colors. And much like the jump from 1080 to 4K, I think it's display technology that makes a big difference, especially when you're viewing it side by side with a non-HDR TV and it's worth being ready for. Rule number three is know your panel technology. That's what the screen is made of and what lights it up. The screen makes the colors, the light lights those colors up. I'm gonna keep this simple, not dive into too many technical details. I'll just tell you what's good and what's not as good. The best technology right now for your, your panel is OLED. That's just the best available. OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. It doesn't require a backlight. It's just the panel, which is the pixels that create the color and then they also light up, so you don't need a backlight for it. So they can be thinner, they use less power. They can also be expensive though, uh, although they are much cheaper than they were last year or especially a few years ago. The second best technology for your panel is LCD in the front and LED in the back. So the LCD creates the colors and then an LED backlight behind it that shines through and lights it up. Now, LED backlight technology does have a few variations, so we'll start with that. Uh, from relatively worst to best, uh, we'll start with LED edgelet displays. Uh, that's actually what I got. It's not terrible, but it's just not as good as an LED full array panel. Um, so edgelet is the relatively worst step up to full array, and that's put LEDs across the entire panel versus just on the sides or the edges. And then the best option you can get for an LED backlight is full array plus local dimming. So you have LEDs covering the back and then it can actually dim parts of the screen that should be dark for darker scenes. That will give you much deeper blacks as well as the best contrast ratio available. Now that's the backlight, but what about the panel itself? That's the LCD in front. There are four main LCD types that you'll probably see out there, TN, VA, and then IPS or PLS, which are both kind of in the same category. IPS and PLS are generally the best when it comes to LCD display panels. Uh, that's what I got, IPS. It generally gives the best color depth. VA is also an okay standard too, that's vertical alignments. Uh, and then standard pretty much is TN, that would come in last, but again, it's still perfectly adequate. It's just, you know, when you're buying technology, there's always stuff that's a little bit better. So again, from worst to best, TN, VA, and then IPS or PLS. Rule number four, resist the curves. This is just a pretty basic idea. Curved TVs suck. They're made for group watching, at least large TVs usually are. 
But with a curved television, there's really only a very small sweet spot that you can sit in, and it's much harder to move around and watch from off angles. Curved monitors like this one are okay though, since usually it's just one person sitting and you can sit right in front of it, and that's much better. I just never really liked uh, curved TVs and like 3D TVs, just never really caught on with me, so I don't think that's something important that you should look for. So when my wife found that deal, I applied these rules and I ended up with this TV. The price was right and my only compromise was the panel, which is an IPS LCD with LED edge lighting instead of an OLED, but that's still a huge jump up in size and quality from our old TV, which was a 47 inch 1080 by JVC. If I added a fifth rule here, it would be to make sure that the TV has VESA mount support for wall mounting. I grabbed an articulating wall mount from Monoprice for ours, so I can still pull it out from the wall and get back there at the inputs if I need to. But most all large TVs do have VESA mounting points, so I didn't feel like including that as a rule. To wrap things up though, I have searched the holiday deals that are going on right now, and I found a few 4K TVs that I feel meet these requirements. I have posted Amazon links to those down in the description. You can check those out, but just click on them and check the model number, and then definitely check other retailers as well because there's a ton of deals going on right now for Black Friday and the holidays. Let me know in the comments also if you're going to be upgrading to 4K this year. Hit the like button on your way out and thanks for watching.